Hello, I'm Emily Watson, and this is my career in four minutes. You're hiding someone, aren't you? If anyone saw him, they would take you away from me, and they cannot tell you what they will do to him. I'm afraid. They're checking basements. Mama! What is this about? Matt! Matt! I can't lose you. It was the best training that any film actor could ever have because there was absolutely no sense of anything technical at all. There was no set up shots, lighting, hitting a mark, any concessions to the fact that you were sort of making a technical piece of artifice of film at all. We just played the scene over and over and over and over and the camera was in the room with us, <clears throat> just a there, handheld, as if it was part of the scene just observing and scrutinizing. And so we just did it. We went again and again and again, take after take after take. And you instantly get to a place, well not instantly, but very quickly get to a place of relaxation and opening up to that. It was really just the coolest thing. And I remember sitting down in my house in London, watching Adam's movies and thinking, okay, Okay, and then had picturing in my head that Adam Sandler was probably in his house in Beverly Hills watching Breaking the Waves. <laughs> I mean, Paul, to me, he is the filmmaker of his generation. He's the most interesting American filmmaker. What he asked of us, well, particularly of me, he said, I don't want you to do anything that you've done before. I don't want you to bring a whole kind of character and preparation and, you know, story to this. I just want you to turn up and be which is kind of terrifying, um, but it was fascinating. It was great. I'd actually, the second time that I had worked with Christian, mm. and um, so I kind of knew, knew him from before, and he was still kind of pretty young, and um, you know, he wasn't the great big movie star that he is now. He's a lovely, lovely man, but he's incredibly focused and disciplined. Um, and you know they sort of set themselves this ambition of, of sort of slightly reinventing this sort of martial artsy thing, and what, they kind of went crazy for it. And it was just really it was amazing what they did. It was like a little bit like being inside somebody's brain, um, and a fevered brain at that. And obviously, um, with Phil Hoffman at the center of it, who um, was. Amazing. I mean, really, really amazing that we had a quite an intense scene together and to have a front row seat and see him do that, see him do his thing. And I would, you know, the, he's the actor that I would want to be. Just being on set with Steven Spielberg was so cool. I mean, the bit of the film that I was in was simpler than, you know, some of the really big set pieces. But he had a great big on-set editing suite and he was, while we were filming kind of in between scenes, he was doing a lot of planning and um, thinking about... Um, you know, designing the cavalry sequence and things like that, and he was he he sort of get me over and show me all these incredible machine projection. Well, I don't know what they all were, but they you know, it was really sophisticated and impressive. And then and they said, but you know what, this is today, and he there was a little uh, literally an envelope with a shot list on the back of the envelope, which I thought was rather cute. I loved it because it it, it loves what I do. It's about the power of storytelling, you know, and that's what you know that's what we do. We tell stories and. Uh, but also I was very excited by the idea of playing somebody that, that unpleasant and unattractive and foul-mouthed and, I, you know, that was really a treat. There once was a girl who had a friend that lived in the shadows. She would remind him how the sun felt on his skin and what the air felt like to breathe. And that reminded her that she was still alive. Good night, book thief. <laughs>